The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan of TheMorganReport.com for the week ending 26, August 2022. Well, let's get right into it. This is the new landing page, and we talk about where we are with a potential financial crisis, and it's really unfolding before our eyes. It just hasn't accelerated to the point where most people are concerned about it. They're still in stocks. They're still in uh, real estate and all that. And that's fine. I'm pre-market. Whatever you think is going to serve you and your family best, by all means, plunge or forge ahead. However, I think there's an important point to be made here. And that is if you click this link here, it'll take you to this expanded landing page. And if you scroll down, I've said this before, I did an interview with uh, Daniela Camone about bail-ins and banks can seize your money in the coming financial crisis. I think there's over 2 million views on that. If you haven't watched it, I suggest that you do. And if you have watched it, you might want to review it. And if you have people out there that are concerned or you're concerned about, and they're kind of uh, not in tune with the fact that there are bail-ins coming, then I suggest you could forward it to them. So what I want to get into this week is we're going to omit gold and silver and what I normally do. I'm going to go straight to this article that just came out very recently. And it comes from a site named southfront.org. The gentleman is out of the UK, probably mispronounced his name, but he wrote this article and it was brought to my attention by my friend John Perez at Silver is Money. And John has done the same article probably a little more colorful than yours truly, uh, that you could find on his Telegram channel. And again, that channel is Silver is Money. So the title of this is When Your Bank Fails, Don't Walk, Run. And the quote that Brett, I think it's tightly or tightly wrote, starts with, it's easier to rob by setting up a bank than holding up a bank clerk. Think about it. So it starts out in bold as a new recession spirals into an economic depression. So he's not afraid to tell the truth. Central bank have a Hobson's choice. Stop rapidly rising core and consumer inflation or stop national economic production. The Bank of England cannot do both. And like the U.S. Federal Reserve lacks the economic tools to deal with effectively with either the British bank depositor is very much at risk. Let me pause there. The whole interview I did with Daniela was about the U.S., but I also suggested in that interview that there were other jurisdictions that had basically or essentially the same, juris- the same law, and they do. So this is relative to the U.K. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I think you should read it, print it out, hand it. I mean, this is very important. Um, the U.K. pound hit historic lows. The value of a month <clears throat> last this month, and all major banks are suddenly predicting doom. Ironically, these banks are today's exponentially more over leveraged with derivative exposure than the same financial chicanery that caused the 2008 Great Recession with the home mortgage sector. So let that sink in a little bit. All we've done is papered over on a global basis, UK included, obviously, and this has done nothing but make the problem worse. Since you are tertiary in this financial relationship, when your bank fails, don't walk, run. Which means you're an unsecured creditor to the bank and the the deposit that you think is your deposit is actually the bank's quote unquote money or currency. And they can bail it in, take it, and send you a receipt saying that you are now a stockholder in that enterprise. Since 2008, too big to fail banks, consolidated to become much greater in size and power than ever. Their financial and political powerhouses controlling world economies to their advantage for years. Investment legend Warren Buffett called derivatives financial time bombs for economies and ordinary people. It should be noted that former Fed Chairman Paul Volcker resigned in January 2011 from President Obama's Economic Recovery Advisory Board in disgust due to the renewed headwinds continuing to allow unregulated derivatives. 
Just want to digress real quickly. Again, this cannot be overemphasized. This is the extra pyramid showing the financial system as it exists in simplified form. And it is an upside down pyramid. So if a pyramid is a very stable structure, the converse is true. A upside down pyramid is a very unstable structure. And that's what's illustrated by this upside down pyramid. You can see that the vast majority at the base is derivatives and unfunded government liabilities. So this is the biggest part here, and that's the most toxic of all. And then you could come down the pyramid. What's trusted right now is government bonds, especially treasuries from the United States primarily, but that's being less and less trusted all the time. And then beyond that is paper money, and this is not just United States Federal Reserve notes. It's also any paper currency, Euro, Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar, whatever. Anything that you physically hold the currency is more trusted than having something other than that. And lastly, when that type of money is not trusted any longer or some percentage of people don't trust it to buy what they want in the future or don't trust anything about it, they're going to move into gold. And of course, you could put it, I would put a little silver uh, capstone right here, but that's gold. Gold, you can just think of it as precious metals. Think of gold only, think of it as gold and silver, you can think of whatever you want. The idea is once faith is lost here, then it moves down here into the pyramid. So I just wanted to emphasize this and continue on with the article. So it continues, meanwhile, the U.S. taxpayer watched pension funds went bust, bankrupt businesses rid themselves of long-term retirement obligations, and their families' financial futures were cast aside from any concern. Under Dodd-Frank, the U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation was given new powers and the methods to guarantee depositor savings. Under the direction of TARP, such powers were also included in Britain's 2012 Prudent Regulation Authority, PRA, reform bill. Both agencies <clears throat> put a stop to bailouts. However, they did so miraculously, morphing bailouts into something new called bail-ins. Worse, in redefining bank deposits, suddenly a paycheck for pending bank failure shifted to the unsuspecting bank depositor. Today's global exposure and derivatives by banks and financial houses has dramatically ballooned to more than $1 quadrillion distributed over virtually all financial sectors. In 2008, it wasn't only the housing sector. I will disagree with that, but the majority was. But in 2010, the authors of Dodd-Frank did little about reneging in the derivative trickery. On December 10, 2012, a joint strategy paper was drafted by the Bank of England in conjunction with the FDIC, which states in part, the authorities in the United States and the United Kingdom have been working together to develop resolution strategies to enable financial institutions to be resolved without putting public funds at risk. Well, that means taxpayer funds coming from taxes. It doesn't mean they're not going to attack your bank deposits. Sounds nice until you read the fine print. UK banks are currently required to hold a reserve of 18% of cash deposits. But this reserve is not applied to derivatives. Currently, the UK banks hold trillions in derivatives exposure. What this means for cash depositors is that applied to Dodd-Frank and failing banks, all these derivatives will be paid off first using your savings, and your savings are now legally last the minds of the banks. Millions across the world that have lost their homes, pension funds, retirement plans, and dreams in 2008 watched helplessly as the bailouts did not trickle down from the too-big-to-fail banks to their dinner tables or petrol tanks. Regarding new bail-ins, however, in 2010 and previously bailed out too-big-to-fail banks were also provided with a new, more hopeful definition. Globally active, systemically important financial institutions. By redefining bailouts to bail-ins, Dodd-Frank gives new powers to the FDIC and by extension to PRA that provides for an even more draconian resolution. That any deposited funds in a bank in lieu of a cash payback 
be returned to the depositor in the form of bank stock. It gets worse. An FDIC report released in 2012 reads, quote, an efficient path for returning the sound operations to the private sector would be converting a sufficient amount of the unsecured debt from the original creditors, meaning the depositors, into equity, stock. So in other words, they'll take your cash and give you stock in their company. An April 24, 2012 IMF report also supported the conversion of bank deposits to using stock when they bailed in. Such was the case in 2008 in Cyprus, Greece, and Spain for affected depositors to retrieve the remaining cash value of what was formerly their cash accounts balance, the stock provide the stock provided to them had to eventually be sold. When Lehman Brothers failed, unsecured depositors eventually received only eight cents on the dollar. Over a million Bankia customers in Spain were forced by decree to become stockholders and were returned just 5% when finally selling their stock. Like Britain, America, and Western European nations, China now suffers from the conclusion of an economy based only on debt. On April 18th, over 400,000 depositors of five regional banks in China's Henan province were prohibited from making withdrawals. Despite the massive outrage, the Chinese authorities did little except promise a maximum paltry bailout of 50,000 won, approximately $7,500. Apparently, China will not be paying off soon. Last week, China mobilized its military to protect some of the banks from public outrage for further attempted withdrawals after the CCP suddenly announced that the depositors' remaining funds will now be repaid with stock. As the pound collapses, layoffs begin anew, fuel reaches historic highs, and winter is on the way. The UK bank depositor would do well to heed two other vital truths that the Chinese now consider self-evident. Never trust a banker. And when your bank fails, don't walk, run. So what's the solution? Well, one of the solutions is to get out of the banking system. And no one, it's very difficult to get out of the banking system in total. However, if you have a large deposit, you might consider moving that into precious metals. If you want to do that and you'd like me to help you, and I'm not a broker dealer, I just have tied into some of the refiners slash hedge funds slash depositories, that will probably get you a better price. I can only do it for people like in the 100,000 euro or more. Anything less than that, just go on the internet and find the best uh, you know, bid ask spread you can in the retail market. And the other thing is you can go into a uh, crypto back digital currency. Uh, I am familiar with one as I am an ambassador and I've invested silver in this project. And that's available at ag.load.one. If you go to ag.load.one, you will land here and you can turn some of your bank deposits into digital silver and gold, which is backed by physical. And yes, you could take the physical. It wouldn't be my first choice. My first choice would be to get the hardcore metal in a depository or in your own hands or both. If you're a big depositor, I would suggest you probably take some and keep it handy, but then uh, you're vulnerable if you have a lot in your business or your home. That's your choice. Uh, but I would definitely keep some there and then some probably in a depository that you can trust. And lastly, this would be a backup and also a very easy way to spend it, and that is with a cryptocurrency backed by physical metal. So I'm going to leave it there this week. Remember, when your bank fails, don't walk, run. This is David Morgan signing out for this month of August. I'll be back with you next week on a Friday with another weekly perspective.